The new Redivus A1HT. Is it any good? Let's find out. Stick around and we'll get right to it. One of the reasons I continue to work with Redivus is they keep producing good quality radios that are free of spurious emissions and durable. So when they reached out and asked if I wanted to check out this new A1, I looked at the spec sheet and definitely wanted to take a look at it. It's got some interesting little features to it. Now, I'm not going to bore you with opening up the box. It's got all the standard stuff that you expect to come with an HT. What I want to do is go ahead and jump over to the bench. Let's take a look at a few quick features, and then we're going to run this thing through a power test. And finally, we're going to submerge this one and see if it's as waterproof as the RA-89 is. Now, I will say that it comes with a pretty good instruction manual. I've only found one issue with this, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Oh, did I mention that it's got GPS built in? Yeah, we'll get to that, the pros and the cons, here in a second. One of the other things I really like is the base takes USB-C for the charging. Now, I will say that inside the box, you don't get a charging block, so you'll have to bring your own. They do provide the USB cable, though. Taking a look at the radio, under the cover here, we're going to have USB-C charging, and then we've got our headphone and microphone port right here, so we can run an external speaker mic if we wish. Let's flip the radio over, and you're going to see three different buttons here. The top button is going to give you scan. We've got a primary PTT button, and then the bottom button right here will PTT the B band on the radio. The primary PTT can be used for the A band or the B band, depending on how you've got the radio set. This radio will do UHF, VHF. It will also receive the air bands and the weather channels. Speaking of the weather channels, I do want to show you guys one thing right here. Uh, the manual says if we press and hold exit, it will take us into the weather frequencies. And this is actually weather alert. It also tells you in the manual, if you want to change that frequency, you can use the up and down arrows right here. However, you'll notice that's changing this frequency on the bottom. And if I try to use AB to get up to the top, well, it won't jump up to the top. So there's no way it, from this particular setting to activate the weather channel and change those frequencies. The catch here that isn't mentioned in the manual is just press the menu button, which will bring up the weather radio for you. Now you can change the channel here to any channel you wish. When you're done, just press the menu button again. It'll turn the tone back on, and now it's listening for a weather alert to be coming in. I haven't been able to test the weather alert feature just because there hasn't been any severe weather in my area since I got this radio. Now let's check out the AM receive for the airband. So I'm going to key in 133.975, and I believe I should be able to hear the airport here locally. Eh, a little scratchy, but it is pulling in that airband. Before we get to programming this radio and showing you how easy that is, I do want to show you the GPS function. I do have a GPS lock on the uh, radio. It'll show you that right here. If you press the exit key, it will show you some basic data. And there's a way to send your GPS coordinates to another radio. However, I only have one of these radios and from what I can tell, this is not like an APRS GPS location. So you're going to need two of these radios in order to use this function where you could send your GPS data to another radio. Uh, however, if we press the menu button and come down to GPS, we can then go into that. And if we come down to GPS info and press uh, the menu button there, we do get quite a bit of data. So my GPS coordinates, the speed that I'm moving, well, that's off by a little bit because I'm standing still. Uh, it does give us our altitude in meters, and it gives us the current time. You do have to set your current time zone in order to get this to work. I'll show you that in just a second. It also gives us the current date and then it's going to circle back to the top. If you want to turn that on and off, you can use this menu item here, 
And the third item here is to set the time zone. Programming the radio is fairly easy. We'll just go ahead and try to program a repeater real quick. So we'll say 145170, which is a local repeater for me. Now that we've got that plugged into the VFO, we're going to hit the menu and come down to program. We'll go ahead and set the transmit tone that we're going to need for this. So we'll just tell it CTCSS. And then it's going to ask us exactly which tone we want to use. And if I remember right, I need 114.8 for that particular repeater. We'll press exit to go back one screen. And then we need to set the offset direction. And we might have to plug in the offset amount. So the direction for that one is going to be minus. And let's see if the offset is already set. Yep, it's already set. So that should be all we need. Now we can just come down a little ways. And I think I went past it. We're going to hit channel memory. We'll press menu. And it's going to ask us which slot we want it in. Channel one is already taken up with the simplex frequency. So we'll just put this one in slot two. We'll go ahead and press enter there. And that's it. If we exit all the way back out... Now, if we go into the channel mode, channel two should be our new repeater. Turn the volume up just a little bit, and let's test that out. And it's that easy to program in a repeater. If you wanted to add a name to that repeater, that's fairly easy as well. Once you're in the memory mode and you have the channel selected, press your menu again, come down to program, and then come to channel name. You can go in here. Exit will walk you backwards uh, through the uh, letters. So you can delete. Whoop, went a little too far. Exit will walk you backwards so you can delete the letters. Let's see if I can not go past it this time. And then if we use the pound key down in the bottom right corner, we can cycle through lowercase, uppercase, and numbers. So then beyond that, it's just simple T9 text. So this is KU4B. So we'll give it K. We'll give it U. Uh, we need to go to the numbers. We'll give it four. Let's go back to uppercase. And we'll give it a B right there. Press menu. And you've now saved that channel name. Now when we go back out, you'll see it's still reading channel two. If we use the VM button right here, it will cycle between the frequency, the channel number, and then the actual name that you've named it. Taking a look at power output, I was getting about 0.16 out on low power, just a touch over 2 watts out on mid power, and just under 4 watts out on high power. All right, got a little bit of background noise I'm having to deal with here, but the radio has been submerged for 10 minutes. Let's pull that sucker out, and it looks like it's still working. All right, let's get an audio test. What we're going to do is set it right here by the microphone and then walk around the corner and transmit and see what that receive audio sounds like while it's soaking wet. Kilo mic four alpha Charlie Kilo testing to see what the Redivus E1 sounds like after it's been submerged in water. Kilo mic four alpha Charlie Kilo test clear. All right, now we're going to turn the test around. This is the A1 that I've got here under the water. And we're just going to take it, walk around the corner, and see what it sounds like. As soon as we pull it out, we're going to get around the corner as quick as we can, then see what it sounds like on its transmit after it's been submerged in water. Here we go. We'll make our way around to the other side of the deck. Hopefully that wind noise is not uh, getting in the mic too terribly much. So that's been just a couple of seconds here. Let's see what happens. Kilo, mic four. For Alpha Charlie Kilo testing the transmit quality of the Redivus A1 radio, transmitting back to the other Redivus R89 radio. Let's see how this audio sounds. Kilo, mic four. Alpha Charlie Kilo, test clear. So what's the takeaways from the A1 review? Well, I've got a couple of thoughts here. First of all, the GPS, while cool, doesn't really make sense unless you have multiples of these radios. Now, if you have everyone in your party using one, that would be a totally different use case. What I would love to see is Redivus come out, they're so close right now, to come out with a full-blown APRS radio. Uh, all I would have to do is probably add a TNC to this rig and 
update the firmware to have a full uh, APRS radio. If we could get that in the $100 to $200 range, I think that would be an absolute runaway hit. Now, the price on this, well, it's priced right at $59. And I will leave a link in the description below if you're interested in the radio. The one other thing that I saw is, unlike the RA89, the speaker did suffer some quality loss after it was submerged in water. Now, I let it dry out for a couple of hours, and it was fine. It went right back to working the way it did when I first got it out of the box. So, it's by no means a hit on the waterproofness of this radio, but it you, it, you will lose some audio quality if you do submerge it for a period of time. All in all, if you're looking for a good quality waterproof radio that won't break the bank, you can't go wrong with a Redivus A1. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.